Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1116. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a cool one here. We need to look up every third item and return it to a cell. Now, we're going to look at three examples. One where we have the sample numbers in a column that can help us look up the first instance of each sample. Then we'll see how to do it without the sample column. And then we'll see a dynamic method that allows us inputs to tell it what's the start position, what's the increment, and it will automatically go through and pick out the right ones. All right, now this first one, since we have the sample, and that's this position copy, it should say the sample number, we can simply use the match function to look up the sample, there's the lookup value, relative cell reference, within this whole column, Control Shift Down Arrow F4. These are sorted, so when we type a comma and go to type, well, we're not going to use the one or leave it omitted. We want the exact match because we want to actually find the first position of each sample. Boom, there's a two, there's a three. By using exact match zero, anytime you look up and there's duplicates, it always gets the first one. Now, match delivers the relative position of the item in the list. Now we can simply use that relative position, one, four, to look up these numbers using the index. Now notice I double clicked and send it down. Active cell, hit F2, and now we can edit that formula. Using index, a lookup function, the array, the entire column of numbers, Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma, the argument is row number, but it's really relative position, first, fourth, etc. Match is perfect. We come to the end, close parentheses. Now I've highlighted the whole range and I'm editing in the active cell to populate it all the way down. Hold Control and tap Enter. And just like that, we have looked up, boom, the second, the or the first item for each sample, which happens to be an increment of three each time. Now what do we do if we don't have that sample column? Well, we can quickly create the positions ourselves. It's the first position, the fourth, the eighth, by simply going one, four. In essence, what we've said is the starting position one. We're adding three each time. We simply highlight those. We've created a pattern when we use our fill handle to click and drag. It will automatically increment. So if it really is always every three and we're allowed to do that, this is a quick and dirty method. The array, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma, and our row number, relative position, well, we already created them using the fill handle magic. That'll be a relative cell reference. Control Enter, double click and send it down. By the way, we couldn't double click and send this one down because there's nothing to the left, whereas here, there was something to the left. Hey, look at that. It works perfect. I like that method. If it's quick and easy and always three, just use that fill handle trick, right? Now, what do you do? if you don't have that sample column and we want it to be a little bit more dynamic. Well, we need to create the number 1, 4, 7, 10 and have it automatically update depending on the start and the increment. Well, let's go ahead and look at our, our well-known rows function formula element to create sequential numbers, 1, 2, 3, as I copy down. I'm sitting in N5, so I type N dollar sign 5. I'm locking the 5, colon, and then put N5 again, not locking the 5 this time. That way, we'll get an expandable range. Control Enter, click and drag. You could see that 5 is locked down because of that dollar sign, but the number in the second part of this range is not locked down, so it creates an expandable range. Now, I'm going to actually subtract 1 to get 0 as the start position. I'm going to put parentheses because we're going to add a math operation out here. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. That just subtracts 1, so 0, 1, 2. Notice I have the whole range highlighted, F2. Now I can multiply times the increment. F4 to lock it. Notice 0 times 3 is 0, but down here 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Control Enter to populate that all the way down. Now, just to get our starting position, we hit F2 and add our starting position, F4. 
control enter to populate all the way down. Now, if we change this, the starting position is now 2. Instantly, we get 2, 5, 8. We could see these are the values we want to extract. I'm going to leave it at 1. Now we can simply either use this column or we can copy it and paste it inside our index. Whoops. The array, Control Shift down, now F4 comma, and I'm going to Control V. I accidentally highlighted the uh, equal sign. And I'm going to keep this contained within the range of extracted values here. So I moved that so it's 05. Close parentheses on the end, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now we could either leave this here. If we left it here, then I wouldn't put all of that. I would just refer to it, right? But now we can move this anywhere, you know, delete it if we want, right? And this totally will work. Right now we can see we get 35, 74, 36. Those match up perfectly. If I change the input to 4, then I get 36. 0.728, et cetera. That reference down at the by, bottom, by all means, we could use a means of uh, turning that off, if error. And then the value, come to the end, comma. And then the value, if error, we could use double quote, double quote. That's a null text string to show nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. And that way, we'd always get. So if I want to say uh, start at 10, boom, there it is. It's only going to the 10th one. And then the increment is 3. If I change this to 5, I can't believe how cool that is. I'm extracting exactly the right items. All right, uh, that's a little fun with looking up and retrieving every third item, or in some cases, a start number and an increment. All right, we'll see you next trick.